Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at using a SQLite database in our project. We're going to run our first query. Our query is going to contain this information that you see here in list book and rather than having hard-coded strings we're going to read the same exact information from a database. A few things that you will need to do ahead of time to follow along here you will need this SQLite database. I did a previous video on it here. Uh, this is how you open up the tab. If you followed along with the previous video, you can open up the toolbox by clicking this button here. Uh, I also have this program, DB Browser for SQLite. There's other programs that do the exact same thing if you're interested in getting a program. It's just another way to easily read what's inside your database, update, change, and all of that. So continuing with the code example, let's first look at the data we want to add. So I'm going to I'm going to look at my database here. You can open up the tables if you'd like. Right now I have two tables, books and users. And um books and users and we added data here a while ago using the database helper here. Uh, we added a book book data from a CSV here. Just want to show you the code real quick to show you what's in there. Uh, we opened it up from a CSV file that I also used in a previous video. So yeah, just contains this information. So let's let's work on writing our first query here. So here I'm going to write uh, select star from books. So what we're looking at here is select says we want to read some data. Star means I want to read all columns here. So if I only wanted to read certain columns, we could type in the column names. So here I've opened up in DB Browser SQLite, all you do is open database and then you put in this, this link, this file name that goes straight, straight to your database, DB, and then you'll have access to your data that you made, if you made any data, or you can add new data here too. So if I wanted to title author genre, instead of the star, I could put one of these column names in place of it. Star means grab all of them. And then from is the books table. So whatever tables you have from SQL structured query language. So this is how we can read data from the database. If I run this, we see that data that is stored in the database there. So that's a, a simple little query that we're going to run. And now we want to inject this into our program. We want to use this code inside of our program. So the way we're going to do that whoops, is replacing this, this set of code here. So in SQL Lite book repository, we're using our interface with some polymorphism. As we've mentioned in the past, we are going to remove that filler data and read our database. So the first thing we need to do is read our connection string. This is how we tell our program, our C sharp program here, what or where, more specifically, where our data is saved. So we do that by saying data source equals, and now I'm giving it the file location. Where I've saved it is, I'm going to click this button here, show all files, which shows all the project files. So this is, this is where I've saved the file right here. Right, and I can just copy that name rather than trying to type it out exactly. And then we need to say the version, version three, 
is what I saw recommended, so that's the one I'm using. There's probably other versions that would work if you want to try them out. I'm going to stick with version 3 for now. Cool, we have our connection string. Uh, I actually want to put the connection string out here for now. Uh, probably, yeah, we'd want to put it out here. We're going to reuse the connection string later for different methods. So when we add more methods, we will be reusing that connection string. As we saw earlier, because we're using I enumeral, we can use an array, but I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a list because it's a little bit easier to populate a list rather than an array, especially given that I don't know how much, how many items are on the table, or you might not know how many items are on the table. Then we're going to put these using statements in. The using statements are nice because once the scope block finishes, the memory is disposed. So we're going to create a connection string here. Then we're going to use that right there. And connection string goes inside of that method. Uh, we're getting an error here because we need to add our using statement system.data.sqlite. I had to add this, I had to install this. So, did this in the previous video. Check it out if you haven't. You have to install this library, it's probably not available within Visual Studio unless you've installed it yourself ahead of time. Uh, another way, if you don't know, if you don't want to type that out exactly, you can usually click the light bulb here and that, that's almost doing what I want it to do. I want it to, oh, there's a typo, that's why. Oops. I already have it in here. I'm trying to show with the light bulb, you can add that using statement right here. So by clicking that button, it added this. I deleted it just a couple seconds ago. Cool, we have the using statement. And Now we have our connection string inside of our connection. So now we have a connection to the database. First thing you need to do is open the connection. And without the using statement, you would need to close the connection. Otherwise, you're going to have problems uh, trying to read the file later, or you might have a, a few different problems if you don't close the connection. But with the using statement, once this code block finishes here, once we leave this scope block here, the memory will be released. So you don't need to necessarily close it. Here's the query. So the query is what we ran earlier here. Where did we, we ran it here. But I deleted it. Okay, we'll just type it out. That's select star from books. That's it. That's all we're running. It's probably good practice to just run it in your uh, run it run it in your database or run it in SQL toolbox here, SQL Lite toolbox, just to make sure your query works. This is what's going to be sent back. This is what's going to be sent. This data will be sent straight to this method right here. All right, now we have our query. Now we need to run it. So we use a SQLite command to run the query. A lot of this stuff is boilerplate. You're going to see many examples of this everywhere you look. 
these using statements are very common. These, uh, you build the connection, you put a command inside the connection. This is very boilerplate type of very standardized Then you put a reader. And then we execute, we're gonna execute a reader here. And these using statements release the memory. So these variables go away once they're once they're done. And now we have all the SQL light stuff that we need to run our command here. I want to put a over turn statement in the right spot here. We're going to return books when we're done. That removes the red underline so the compiler is happy but the books is just an empty list. So now we're going to use the reader to populate our empty list and then we'll be done. So the first thing we'd like to do is create a while loop and while reader is being read So the while loop's just going to keep going row by row, keep going row by row, and then enter our data here. We'll use int32. You could probably use int64 too. Get ordinal and ID. Can I put capital letters? Lowercase letters. I don't think it's case sensitive, but I want to match it. String title. And now we're just going to use the reader to keep getting values here. I uh, save a little bit of time. I'm going to copy this code and we'll walk through it line by line. It's a lot of rinse, repeat, right? So we're using this reader. So the reader now that we've run the command, we've run this SQL command, all that data is stored in our reader here. All this data is stored in this in this reader, this SQL light data reader here. And then we just read from it line by line. So ID will be reader get get in 32 reader get ordinal. So this will pull this value here for the first row. Title will be this value. So reader get string, reader get ordinal. This will read our data row by row. Uh, and then what I have going on down here with this if else, we have uh, we have an enum in our project. The genre is an enum. So I'm just doing a little bit of error checking. Uh, allowing this field to be empty or null. Uh, that's what this if else is doing here. It's checking if the genre exists. If it doesn't exist, we're going to put null in there. And like we saw earlier, the reader is just going to loop through the code and read the code line by line, line by line. Let's put these side by side, right? ID, title, author, genre, string. ID, title, author, genre, string. It's just going to read line by line. And then it's going to add it to the books list here. And then when we're done, we return the books list. And to use, so just as a sanity check, Let's let's delete some of these. And we should be running this code right here, the one where I just said test one, test two. Our new login screen. Cool. Now let's switch to from mock repository here, we're using some polymorphism. Now we're going to use SQLite. 
and now with just that one change because our library book manager takes the interface I'll open that up real quick our library book manager takes an iBook repository interface variable now we can send in this SQL light book repository because it's of type iBook interface so we send in this this variable here this variable type and that's the polymorphism using this other interface class that we've created this class that implements this interface excuse me and we should be running our database now so let's run the code and see we get the expected result. Yeah, so we got our data from our database. So that's everything that you need to run your first query inside of Visual Studio and in using SQLite. It's uh, just a small, lightweight database, no internet connectivity required. Pretty straightforward, easy to use, highly recommend it. But that's all I'm going to cover for right now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.